switching on the Atlantic Ocean heat pump. Why? 34 million years ago, the warm greenhouse of the dinosaur age stopped and the earth froze. This is by Stockholm University, Science Daily. 34 million years ago, the warm greenhouse climate of the dinosaur age ended. The colder ice house climate of today commenced. Antarctica glaciated first, and geological data implied that the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation, the global ocean conveyor belt of heat and nutrients that today helps keep Europe warm, also started at this time. Why exactly has remained a mystery. Quote, we have found a new trigger to explain the startup of the Atlantic current system during the greenhouse ice house climate transition. It went from warm to freeze. During the warm climate, buoyant fresh water flooded out of the Arctic and prevented the ocean sinking that helps power the conveyor. We found that the Arctic Atlantic Gateway closed due to tectonic forces. The Arctic Atlantic Gateway closed due to tectonic forces, causing a dramatic increase in North Atlantic salinity. This caused warming of the North Atlantic and Europe and kick-started the modern circulation that keeps Europe warm today. This is what David Hutchison says. He's researcher at the Department of Geological Sciences Stockholm University, the lead author of the article published in Nature Communications. The team of scientists from Bolin Center for Climate Research used a combination of geophysical data and climate modeling to show that the freshwater transport through the Arctic Atlantic Gateway plays a critical role in controlling the overturning circulation. He says not only did deep water start forming in the Atlantic Ocean, it also stopped forming in the North Pacific at the same time, which matches geological evidence. We were surprised to find that our computer simulations can explain both of these changes due to st the salty ocean currents connecting the Pacific to the Atlantic. Our study is the first to show that these two events are linked, which is very exciting, says Hutchison. The climate at this time was very warm, with atmospheric CO2 levels two to three times of the present day levels, and this contributed to extremely fresh Arctic waters. The study begs the question of whether in a future warm world, in which the Arctic may again be very fresh, the sinking in the Atlantic may cease again, which may dramatically alter the climate of Europe. Without the Atlantic conveyor belt, Europe can experience both colder winters and hotter and drier summers, making a more extreme and inhospitable climate. Our study helps to bridge the gap between climate modeling and geological observations of the deep past. We hope this will inspire further research from both communities on the deep circulation of the ocean, Hutchison says. This is from Stockholm University by Dr. David Hutchison, Helen Coxell, Matt O'Regan, Johan Nils. Now, 34 million years ago, the Earth was not, the continents were not as we see them today, of course. Now, let's go back to the Paleocene, which lasted from 66 million years ago to 56 million years ago. Uh, the continued process began during the late Cretaceous. Continents continued to drift towards their present position. Supercontinent Laurasia had not yet separated into three continents of Europe. Greenland was still connected to Europe. North America and Asia were still intermittently joined by a land bridge, while Greenland and North America were beginning to separate because they were joined. Can you imagine? Now, the Eocene epoch, 56 million years ago to 34 million years ago, and this is what we're talking about now, what happened with the heat, the heat pump of the Earth at that time. The continents continued to drift towards their present positions. At the beginning of the period, Australia and Antarctica remained connected. A warm equatorial current mixed with colder Antarctic waters, distributing heat around the whole world and keeping global temperatures high. But when Australia split from Antarctica, the southern continent, around 45 million years ago, 
the warm equatorial currents were deflected away from Antarctica, and an isolated cold water channel developed between the two continents. The Antarctic region cooled down, and the ocean surrounding Antarctica began to freeze at that time. So it had to do with geology, you see, and the water. So Antarctica began to freeze, sending cold water and ice flows to the north, reinforcing the cooling. The present pattern of ice ages began about 40 million years ago. The northern supercontinent of Laurasia began to break up as Europe, Greenland, and North America drifted apart. In western North America, mountain building started in the Eocene, we're talking about 56 to 34 million years ago. The West Coast. We're talking about the West Coast. So the mountain building started. You can imagine that means that the plates were subducting and crumbling. All right. Um, mountain building started in the Eocene. Huge lakes formed in the high flat basins among the uplifts. In Europe, the Tethys Sea. That's the Mediterranean Sea today. That was the Tethys Sea. Tethys Sea is, uh, was between Eurasia and the west of uh, today's Africa. Tethys Sea was basically around, uh, what should we say, the Indian Ocean, I guess. So it was, um, you know, it was basically the splitting up of the earth and the continent. Now, Tethys Sea, also called Tethys Sea, or the Neo-Tethys, was the ocean during much of the Mesozoic era between the ancient continents of Guandana, which makes up Latin, South America, Africa, and uh, Asia, and Antarctica, Australia and Antarctica. That was Guandana, and Laurasia was, of course, Europe, Asia, and uh, Russia. So this was the sea location between these, Laurasia and Guandana, before the opening of the Indian and Atlantic Oceans, during the Cretaceous. So, uh, in Europe, the Tethys Sea finally vanished, vanished, while the uplift in the Alps isolated its final remnant, the Mediterranean Sea, and created another shallow sea with island archipelagos to the north. Through the North Atlantic, that was opening up, the land connections appear to have remained between North America and Europe, since the faunas of the two regions are very similar. So, Europe and North America were connected and that was part of, uh, let's put that, Eurasia, okay, America and Asia. So, they were connected, North America and Europe, since fauna and everything was the same. India continued its journey away from Africa, beginning uh, its collision with Asia, creating the Himalayan mountain range. Then you have the Oligocene epoch, extends from 34 million years ago to 23 million years ago. We know about 20 million years ago is where we started, uh, the, the journey of Yellowstone started from the west coast to the, uh, situ the location of where the caldera, Yellowstone caldera is now. Now, 34 million years ago, 23 million years ago, during the Oligocene, the continents continued to drift towards their present positions. Antarctica continued to become more isolated, finally developed a permanent ice cap. Mountain building in Western North America continued. And the Alps started to rise in Europe as the African plate continued to push north into the Eurasian plate, slamming into it, isolating the remnants of the Tethys Sea. A brief marine incursion marks the early Oligocene Europe. There appears to have been a land bridge in the early Oligocene between North America and Europe. There was a land bridge, since the faunas of the two regions are very similar. During the Oligocene, South America was finally detached from Antarctica and the drift northward towards North America. It also allowed the Antarctic, Antarctic circular polar current to flow, rapidly cooling the continent of Antarctica. The Antarctic circular polar current, ACC for short, is an ocean current that flows clockwise from the west to the east around Antarctica an alternative name for the ACC is the West Wind Drift. It uh, flows clockwise from the west to the east. West Wind Drift. The ACC is the dominant circulation feature 
of the Southern Ocean and has a mean transport estimate of 100 to 150 Zverdov, whatever that, whatever that means. I'm reading from this information uh, was from Wikipedia, having to do with the epochs of the Earth. Uh, now we know that Okay, the, there's plate tectonics, there's geology, there's uh, seismology, you know, we're always, uh, uh, it seems that the earth is never quiet, it's growing. Now, the Holocene was uh, about 11,700 years before present and continues to the present. During the Holocene, continent motions, continental motions have been less in, than a kilometer. The Holocene is the current geological epoch we're in now. It began about 11,650 years ago, and after about 10,000 BC, after the last glacial period, which concluded with the Holocene glacial retreat, the Holocene and the preceding Pleistocene together formed the Quaternary period. The Holocene marine fossils are known from Vermont, Quebec, Ontario, and Michigan, other than higher latitude temporary marine incursions associated with glacial depression. Okay, so uh, that's where we are. We are. That's what caused the uh, end of the warm greenhouse atmosphere that we had. Basically, it was the breakup of the continents and the changing of the salinity of the water in the north and the, especially in the south, between uh, the breakup of Australia and Antarctica. Amazing. Because I always thought it had to do with um, the dinosaur uh, extinction caused by the uh, asteroid strike that we had about 66 million years ago. Well, maybe that had a lot to do with it as well. Maybe that brought about the Earth changes millions of years later. Uh, who knows? Because obviously for continents to be drifting like that, smacking up towards each other, something must have uh, motivated them to do that. Some kind of a an instrument, a catalyst, an, Im an impact, for example, in various areas. We had many, many impacts, not just one, uh, could have clearly caused something like that. I'll leave links below for you for this. And we'll also talk about what I found concerning dinosaurs and their flatulence and what that meant for the atmosphere. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.